A very good evening and welcome to this special in edition of the India Development Debate where we're talking about Budget 2020. I'm Tamanna Anandar and first off, let's get you the highlights and the big questions. So the big question after every budget is, does the math add up? Now, as expected, the fiscal deficit target was breached. It was supposed to be 3.3, it went to 3.8. And we'll show you now what the fiscal deficit projection looks like. But the question is, and really this is the question today, and which is why we're asking if the math adds up, is do we believe that 3.8 is really 3.8 first? And second, do we believe we're going to be able to come back to 3.5? This time, one good thing is that the finance minister has decided to transparently put out all her off-budget borrowings. But that also shows you that we may take some time to actually get to that roadmap for fiscal deficit. The other figure which raises questions is the nominal GDP growth for FY21 at 10%. That's the target. We hope it happens. But considering that GDP forecasts have been turned down or revised downwards by the government itself, it seems overly optimistic, as does the disinvestment target of over 2 lakh crore rupees. Remember, in July 2019, the target was 1 lakh crore rupees, more than that. That was revised downwards. So far, we've done about 18,000 crore rupees. Of course, if Air India goes, that LIC IPO happens, it may bump up, but this is uh, really an ambitious one. Let's talk about the big move. You all know the big move, yes? Personal income taxes have been cut. Bonanza for the middle class. There's a new low personal income tax regime. That's what they say. Let's show you how it looks. So essentially, you get to move to a new slab. You get to new, move to a new slab depending on what your income levels are. And that would be between 5 to 10% lesser than before. But and there is a big but. Look at the head over there. This is with no exemptions. So remember all of those exemptions and deductions, you get standard deductions for your insurance policies, uh, your housing loan, uh, interest on housing loan, uh, PPF, all of that goes if you move to the new regime. So think about it very carefully because in most cases, the current regime will seem like a better deal for you right now. Also, the big question, is this just the beginning of phasing out all deductions? These are some of the things that we're going to lay out for you in the show today. We have a stellar lineup of guests, so let's begin. First joining me on the show is Neeti Aayog Chief Rajiv Kumar and Swaminathan Iyer the man that you want to always hear from on budget day and know what he's really thinking about. So let me start with Rajiv Kumar. Mr. Rajiv Kumar, thank you so much um, for, seeing, uh, for speaking with us on this big budget day. Now, so far through the day, the responses that we're getting is, okay, the budget's all right, some moves here and there, but where's that big bank reform which was supposed to lift the economy and chug us out of this slowdown? Why do you think the finance minister has held back? Uh, I don't uh, quite understand what is meant by the big bag reforms. Uh, because the market clearly expected the government to become totally irresponsible in fiscal terms and announce a huge increase in public expenditure irrespective of what it did to the fiscal uh, discipline of the fiscal uh, you know, situation, which the finance minister obviously hasn't done. Uh, so therefore, some bit of disappointment. But uh, in my view, the budget has done a lot in terms of uh, uh, encouraging investment, in terms of making the investment climate better, in trying to f finally s accept that there has been tax harassment and therefore, you know, in China, taxpayers charter so that the taxpayers have their duties. Uh, talk about solving the whole lot of more than, you know, nearly five lakh uh, tax dispute cases. Uh, you know, give the, uh, you know, reduce, uh, remove the, the, you know, dividend distribution tax, announce a 15% consensual tax on, uh, on, the, on the power sector investment as well as the new manufacturing units uh, and allowed 100% tax deduction on sovereign wealth funds. I could list another few measures that the government has taken uh, to promote investment and to reverse the investment cycle that has been going down so far. And I think that has been the key. 
I've been, I have been much happier always when the extra fiscal space that is used is, uh, is uh, the extra space, fiscal space that is, you know, that is brought about is used for promoting investment rather than direct consumption. So I think to that extent, uh, I, I would hope that next week the market will see the merit of this budget, uh, which has tried to boost investment while retaining fiscal discipline and will come back uh, you know, to the, to, the, to the levels that I expected to. Okay, so, uh, Swami, would you uh, agree with that? Uh, that, you know, there is more merit than the markets have seen so far. And do you think this was just a bit of tinkering? Well, maybe not too much harm done uh, as of now, but falls short of expectations? I would agree with Rajiv that anybody who expected some kind of big bang was expecting too much and was expecting the wrong thing. I would say that this budget has been, has, uh, is a balanced one. As I said, if somebody was expecting lots of scotch and soda, well, this is a little bit of scotch and a lot of soda, rather than a lot of scotch and a little soda. And I think in the current circumstances, some fiscal prudence married with some cautious liberalization was the right formula, which he has followed. Uh, most of the income tax breaks, as they are, are for the middle class. The main thing I would say out there, we have a situation where the maximum income tax rate is 42%, and the corporate tax down to 25, uh, down to 15. That kind of huge wedge you will not see in any country in the world. That is a serious distortion. I had expected she would bring down the gap. She has not brought down the gap. Uh, I would say it's a bold thing that finally we are trying to reduce the fertilizer subsidy after a great many years. Uh, in this particular case, by portraying it as the promotion of menu, well, whichever way you promote it, well and good. I'm glad to see that to the extent that we are trying to promote capital expenditure, it's being financed by things like greater disinvestment, uh, asset sales. Uh, I, I think the LIC IPO is a very good idea, and I'm sure it can raise uh, a lot of money. Sure. I'm sure everybody will want to get into it. However, strategic sales, you know, we've heard a year after year, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it doesn't happen. And I think you need to start planning for that disinvestment from day one after the budget, instead of waiting till halfway through the year and then finding that, you know, there's no time to do it properly. And you need a proper template to say, once you've got the political and other considerations out of the way, you just go bang, when within four months it's done, and there is no question of any rollback or any rethinking because of objections from trade unions or uh, employees or various other quarters. So provided it's done well, well and good. So so I would say it's a decent budget. Uh, it's, it's, it's got a reasonable amount of balance. The main thing that worries me is that Nirmala Sitaraman agrees that off-budget borrowing has been very substantial and that therefore just the formal fiscal deficit figure does not give you a proper picture of total government finances. She says she's going to give the additional details. I have not seen them. But I would like to see them. I would say, you know, just like in monetary policy, we now have core inflation and total inflation. Now in the budget, we seem to be getting core fiscal deficit, which is what she's announced, plus a total deficit, which would be higher. And I would like to see what that final deficit figure is before coming to a firm conclusion on what my verdict should be. You know, uh, um, uh, it's interesting that uh, Swami is talking about scotch and soda at 9 p.m. on a Saturday evening. Uh, much needed. How much scotch, how much soda, I will, you know, leave to each person's choice. But Mr. Rajiv Kumar, I want to come to the fiscal deficit numbers. Uh, you know, move to 3.8 uh, this year. No one really believes even that number. 3.5% next year, not too clear how we're going to get to it. Do you think there is enough credibility in these numbers and that's an issue? How do you see it? No, Tamana, I think the, the very important step that the government has taken is to, in some sense, come clean with the total public sector borrowing requirement. Yes, it's not included in the main text of the budget, but the finance minister has said that this will be included in the annex. So for the first time, the government is not trying to fudge at all and trying to say, yes, that's the total public sector borrowing requirement. You will see the figures in the annex. And then saying that we will get to 3.5%. Now, 
how we will get to 3.5% is going to be principally on the basis of non-tax revenues, where the target has been raised from 1 lakh crore for the last year to double it to 2.1 lakh crore this year. Now, people have said, quite rightly so, that so far we have only got 18,000 crore. But I know that there are in the pipeline several proposals which have all been cleared politically by the cabinet for this investment and privatization of entities like Concor, of the Shipping Corporation of India, of the BPCL. Uh, Air India is also on the block. Some of this is going to happen hopefully before March 31st. And also some asset monetization is likely going to take place also within this year. But for the next year, I'm convinced that with the ILIC IPO and with, the, and with all these things that I have, 26 proposals cleared by the cabinet going into the pipeline with the, with the, with the DEPM, the Department of Investment, now fully prepared, uh, as, as Swami said, with the template, this will happen. So the reduction in the fiscal, in the formal fiscal deficit from 3.8 to 3.5 percent will happen. Also, I am hoping the 10% nominal GDP growth rate that has been assumed, we will end up a little higher. And if we do that, that will also help in reducing the fiscal deficit to GDP ratio. Okay, I'm, I'm going to change uh, tack a little bit here, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, and ask you a question which is being asked uh, quite frequently of India in the last few days and weeks, actually, about whether the government's focus is really on the slowdown and on the economy, or is this massive political capital being expended on, uh, you know, non-core, non-economic issues which are causing strife in society? Very clearly, the run-up to the budget in the last December, when the Prime Minister met a group of six groups of uh, investors, uh, you know, business people, uh, you know, in, 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 separately. Then had a meeting with the Niti Aayog where we had about 40, uh, you know, uh, very candid conversations uh, with the Prime Minister. There was a group here. His focus now is well and truly on the economics and on development, on all these issues that you just mentioned. He himself has said just before the opening of the parliament that he would like all members of the NDA, all the MPs to now focus much more on the economic issues. I, I'm, the government has recognized the importance of getting the economy back on the track. Uh, we know that you know where we are is untenable it is not is, it cannot cannot be should not be there and therefore i'm 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 happy to note that the economic survey also has taken the same line of uh, of uh, supporting the wealth creators or making more space for the private sector like, uh, you know promoting exports the 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 conversation the narrative tamanna believe you me is well and truly on the economy, and I'm very glad about that, of course. Let me take that uh, to Swami. Do you think that that's a concern, uh, that what most people are talking about and what the world media and, and the world is focusing on as far as India is concerned is CAA and the protests against CAA and the violence because of those protests, etc., uh, and not really about the India growth story? Uh, do you think that more political attention is needed on fixing the economy right now, and did you see that in this budget? I would agree. Uh, I mean, Nirmala Sita Raman said something about, you know, among other things, I want to increase happiness. What has been happening on that social harmony front, I'm afraid, ha happiness is not increasing. Happiness cannot be increased by government schemes. <laughs> happiness to be increased requires social harmony, and the kind of things the government has been doing has not improved there. However, whether that distracts attention, I don't know. You might well say, because there is a focus of attention on there, it becomes easier to do some tougher economic reforms. Right now, there is silence, I find, on the rise uh, in fertilizer prices. It was an overdue reform, but if there is no protest about that because people are more worried about uh, CAA, I would say I'm happy that's happened because the shift away from subsidizing commodities like fertilizers to direct benefit transfers is much overdue. I'm glad we are seeing that happen now, and I hope we'll, we'll, we'll see more of it. However, Rajiv, I would like to ask you, I mean, the slowdown that took place did not take place because of tax policy. And if you're going to have a revival in the economy, that also cannot be done entirely on tax policy. You require an improvement across the board on so many things. 
In particular, if we have a lack of competitiveness, which is affecting our exports, it is because we have lack of competitiveness in, shall we say, the land markets, labor, cost of capital, high electricity rates, high freight rates, high turnaround time at our ports. So surely these are the things that we need to bring about fast economic growth and revive the economy. It cannot be done by a tax fiddle here or there. No, absolutely right, Swami. I couldn't agree more with you. I completely agree. Uh, and I think this is where also we, we have to focus a lot more attention on making uh, our, our, our corporates, our uh, firms, our globally competitive. I'm glad to tell you, however, that uh, you know, the, the four labor codes, uh, one of which has been passed, the three are, which in the, uh, are in the parliament now, will go a long way in giving greater flexibility yeah. and greater uh, and, 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 uh, into the labor markets and also to improve labor productivity and labor and, la right. and therefore labor uh, costs for the, for, for the, for the, for the firms. Uh, you, you, please have a look at them and you will see uh, that there's a lot being done there. On the electricity, uh, you know, the fact that uh, the finance minister has made even given more concessions for power investment and we are getting to where you could become an energy uh, surplus uh, economy, yeah. I think we are also getting there. Uh, the, 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 the big reform that we still, I think we still need is in the efficiency of the discoms because they are the ones which are not letting, uh, you know, the, the, the cost in the energy sector, the power sector come down. And I think uh, we will focus there uh, in, the coming, uh, in the coming months. Uh, so, uh, on, on the cross subsidies within the transport sector, some steps have already been taken. For example, the first fare rise in passenger uh, fares for after a very long time that's been done that will reduce the burden on cross subsidy and others yeah. are going to follow. But you're absolutely right. Let me take this opportunity to talk, tell you about you know this huge uh, that you keep that you've repeated more than once about this. Uh, Big difference between the corporate income tax and the personal yes, income tax. The big news In an today. economy like ours, Swami, my view is yes. that you want to encourage corporate investment and therefore you want to make their returns much better. And in an economy where inequalities are already very high, you don't want to reduce personal income tax rates beyond a point because that will be regressive. So I think what she has done uh, to, to sort of you know, rationalize or reduce some of the intermediate rates is probably a better step rather than to bring down uh, you know, the marginal tax rate, uh, which is at the 30% plus surcharge. So I think that's my view on the discrepancy. Uh, as we progress further, I think this, this, this dichotomy will be removed. Yes, the personal income tax was the big thing, Swami. I think, yeah, yeah I would have to say yeah. that, you know, if I am somebody who is earning, who is having to pay 42% on my income tax, then instead of saying, I, Swaminathan Iyer, I am a salaried employee, I will convert myself into Swaminathan Iyer Incorporated and ask for all the payments to be, to be made into my account as Swaminathan Iyer Incorporated and pay tax only at 15% <laughs> instead of 42%. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people will be incentivized to simply shift Swami, the mode Swami, of operation Swami, Swami. from individual to partnership. This I'll, I'll, the, I'll, the, I love the way both of them will just cut me out. Yes. But yes, yes, Rajiv wants to come in. No, Swami, 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 yeah. you, will, you will pay 15% huh. only if you are investing in manufacturing units or in the power sector. And I hope you do, because that is the, that's the way we want you to go. Otherwise, the tax rate, the corporate tax rate, is 22% plus a charge plus sex. That's the one thing. Second, there is no harm in people corporatizing themselves because I'm sure that will generate some employment rather than uh, you know, people remaining salary. Yeah. And, and by the way, the exemptions yeah. announced today for startups uh, you know, by the finance minister are also quite incredible. Raising the turnover limits from 20 crores to 100 crores yeah. is an amazing step because they were, they were being harassed, et cetera, et cetera. All of that will be now behind us. So I think you know, this budget, uh, Swami, is one which is focused very sharply on improving the investment climate and bringing back the investors, uh, you know, on, you know in bringing back investors into the, into the investment mode. And I think to that extent, I am happy that it will you know, improve the growth uh, sentiment and we'll get back to the track, to the trajectory that we want to be. Uh, may I raise one issue? Yeah. I've been disappointed in the last few budgets. I mean, increasingly, we are going yes. protectionist. Yeah. Make in India has not been about how do I 
become world class, but you know, how do I make more and more behind protections barriers? So we've been having these barriers increase over the last years. Here we are having an additional number of customs duties coming mm. in. Now look, if we are going to be negotiating free trade agreements, whether it is the RCEP or the new free trade agreements which you're going to do with the USA or anybody else, we need to say that we need to get to a stage where our import duties are relatively low. You don't want to join a free trade area when your import duties are very high. So, so I, mean, I was hoping that we will gradually see a shift toward lower import of duties. Course not. We are seeing the opposite. We are seeing a make in India behind protectionist barriers rather than world class output. Is this this is a worry for me? Is it not a worry for you? So, I mean, what, what you said earlier was so true. Yeah. We have to first make our firms globally competitive, give them world-class infrastructure, logistics, energy, and, and you know, lack of cross-subsidization. Once we do that, once we get that back-end organized, that is when we would need to, that is when it will be more opportune, opportune to sign, get into free trade agreements. Every free trade agreement that we have gone into since 2003, we have been, uh, our industry has been a loser. So we've got to get that act organized. Yes, I would, I, I know that by raising import tariffs, you also help hurt your exports. And to that extent, uh, you know, I hope that we'll be able to bring our tariffs down sooner because I am not for one, uh, I'm not for a minute uh, saying that we are a protectionist. That, that we would need a protectionist uh, policy regime. No, and in fact, in fact, in fact, good point that Swami makes because in, in this budget, import duties have been increased on everything from imported toys to footwear to furniture to screens for smartphones to walnuts to, you know, uh, precious uh, stones, wall fans. Really, are we becoming more and more protectionist? I think is a fair point, but I'm going to have to end it at that. Thank you so much to both of you. What a fantastic conversation. Rajiv Kumar and Swaminathan Nair, uh, both, uh, you know, debating whether this budget really delivered what it had to. I'm glad they agreed at the end of it. Now, to give us a sense of how corporate India is looking at this uh, budget, budget 2020, the first of this decade, I'm joined now by Vipul Zaveri of Deloitte, Kiran Mazumdar Show of Biocon, and of course, Pawan Goenka of uh, m, m Welcome to all of you. Thank you for speaking with us on uh, this special budget edition on IDD. Ms. Shaw, a lot was said in this budget about respecting wealth creation, uh, about closing the trust deficit. But in terms of action, do you think there's enough of those big, bold reforms to kickstart animal spirits? So, Tamanna, the way I look at it is the government has certainly addressed uh, you know, the business community, I think business confidence is certainly boosted. I really believe that the lowering of the corporate tax rate, which has happened in the past, uh, followed by some of the measures announced today in the budget, um, has, has definitely uh, sent a very positive signal to India Inc. You know, the, uh, the statement on uh, bringing an end to tax terrorism, and you know, making the whole tax uh, uh, environment much more business friendly. Uh, all in all, I think that augurs well for India Inc. Um, I think what has not gone down too well is what the individual taxpayer was, was expecting. And I think this uh, budget uh, certainly addresses uh, the, a slowing down economy and I suppose it, that has arrested the slowing down economy. But what it will not perhaps be able to do is to speedily revive the economy. Because what the economy needs right now is consumption. And what it will do is of course it will uh, it'll, it'll definitely uh, st uh, move towards investment I do see the investment cycle from India Inc. picking up, but as you know, that has a gestational phase. So that's not going to have an impact on jobs or economic revival for at least uh, a few more uh, fiscals. So that's my concern that, you know, from a consumption point of view, have we done enough? And I don't think the government has really addressed that significantly because uh, the exemptions that have been done away with, uh, the 
transfer of distribution, uh, the dividend distribution tax to the hands of the recipient. I don't know uh, what it is going to mean in terms of putting or taking away money from the hands of the people. Um, you know, that's that's actually the big question that's being asked. Let me take that uh, to Ms. Pavan Goenka. In in you know, all sectors were asking, let's increase demand so people start spending more. Apart from personal income taxes are there, but overall. Were there any other big moves that you were hoping for which would boost the sentiment? Well, uh, right now, as I look at uh, the, uh, the items that have been presented in the budget in the speech uh, by the finance minister, uh, I don't see enough which directly uh, boost demand. Uh, I guess the biggest factor would be to uh, uh, put more money in the hands of people uh, by way of income tax reduction uh, for uh, uh, middle class. Uh, but there also I don't know how the calculations will work out because those are in lieu of exemptions not being taken and whether there is an offset, enough offset, I don't know that yet. Uh, but the finance minister did say that there is about 25,000 crores of uh, uh, reduction that happens. Uh, I also think the dividend distribution tax taken out uh, frankly would probably increase the tax incidence for all people who are earning more than 15 lakhs uh, because they will have to pay uh, tax at the marginal rate. So even that is not a uh, reduction of uh, or, or n not, not an increase in, in terms of uh, money in the hands of people. Uh, government expenditure has gone up uh, but it is similar to what happens in, in most year, uh, the rate of increase and therefore there is not a very big jump that will happen in either infrastructure spending or overall government spending and that's what was needed for uh, pushing demand. Uh, so right now, uh, frankly, I don't see enough direct measures uh, for reviving, uh, reviving consumption, which as everybody had acknowledged uh, was the major requirement uh, during this year. Having said that, I must acknowledge that there are a lot of things that the finance minister has focused on. Uh, the three themes that she talked about, the, the, the uh, rural uh, uh, growth, uh, the, aspirational, the aspirational India, the economic development for all, and the caring society. These are three very good themes, and I think she really went through a lot of details on how we're going to be implementing that. So that's uh, really a very positive way of putting across uh, where the nation is move, moving. Sure, but you know, I want to come back. I want to come back on, uh, you know, the personal income tax cuts uh, just for a bit because uh, that was the big ask. The government says they've done it with, uh, without the exemptions. I'm not sure how many are going to move. But do you think it gives enough confidence to start spending, for example, to put down a new EMI for a car? Uh, do you think it's, uh, you know, something which will increase demand in your industry? Well, again, as I said, I don't know yet whether there will be a real reduction in uh, total tax uh, because uh, this tax rate coming down has come in lieu of exemptions. Uh, and, and whether they are offsetting or not offsetting, we have to still do the calculations. Uh, I guess for many taxpayers, they'll probably not offset depending on how many exemptions they were taking. Uh, so uh, first of all, we don't know how much real reduction in income tax will happen for, uh, for most taxpayers. Obviously, for those earning more than 15 lakh, uh, there's no reduction in uh, income tax. In fact, it will probably go up because all the dividends now will be, uh, will be paid uh, at tax at the, at the marginal rate. And uh, there is no reduction clearly for the so-called super rich uh, uh, where a last cess was put in last year. Uh, so, so to that extent, uh, that part of the society is certainly not getting any, any, any uh, increase in uh, take-home income. Okay, let me uh, come to, uh, you know, Vipul Zaveri and uh, get a perspective uh, from you, uh, Vipul, on uh, how you look at it, and especially when it comes to the personal income tax. Uh, of course, all the exemptions go, those lovely Section 80 Cs, uh, 80 Triple Cs. Uh, do you think this is just the beginning of phasing out the whole exemption regime completely? We have to simplify the, the tax uh, law. And one of the ways to simplify certainly is to reduce uh, the number of uh, incentives, exemptions, deductions. We've got a plethora of them. And uh, each one of them, while perhaps uh, well intended at that relevant time, does create uh, uh, opportunities for uh, debates and controversies and therefore complicates the, the uh, entire tax regime. So directionally, that's the right thing to do. 
but uh, if if the you know stated intention that you know uh, uh, so far as individuals are concerned is that with this option they are a need to uh, take advice of uh, tax professionals is going to get eliminated i frankly uh, don't think that that uh, particular objective would be achieved because in order for a lay person to actually decide which is the better of the two uh, with or without the uh, uh, deduction or incentive uh, i'm sure they will need uh, some professional help and uh, you know another difference uh, in relation to the you know the the change uh, in the corporate tax regime that was announced in september last year is that that is a you know one time uh, election of where do you want to go uh, whereas so far as individuals without business income is concerned he needs to exercise this option year on year and therefore uh, the 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 complication does remain and uh, we really need to get into a uh, uh, situation where there is just no option and there are no incentives or deductions to be taken if you want to simplify the other aspect is uh, we could have uh, had a better situation with uh, the slab rates remaining at three slabs as opposed to you know introducing yeah. a fourth slab so while we talk of simplification we also bring in more uh, uh, complexities but uh, i guess there are constraints and uh, uh, one has to uh, Uh, maybe a little uh, sort of indulge the government on this but hopefully this will uh, this will get changed soon enough you know the other concern in this question again for vipul zaveri uh, is what it does to the investment and savings culture um, the fact is uh, a lot of the first investments happened uh, for many people to save taxes Uh, now when that imperative does not exist i mean i know insurance companies are worried a lot today about what's going to happen to the ulips etc when that does not exist do you think it impacts uh, the the savings culture what is the long term effect of this first of all i think it's a uh, uh, a question how many of uh, the individual taxpayers are likely to be availing this option of no deduction because the the benefit is likely to be uh, very little and that too uh, only at the lower end of the slab uh, there could be a benefit uh, to to opt for a lower tax rate against the uh, exemptions uh, and certainly the the various investment uh, schemes and uh, plans which are there uh, uh, to incentivize uh, that deduction i guess the money's will start moving into alternate uh, opportunities to invest uh, and not necessarily also uh, uh, go into consumption so i think there again the objective may not be achieved on both counts that uh, people will opt for that lower uh, tax rate and assuming they opt and there is more money left in their pocket uh the the assumption that it will be spent because the maximum saving if it is 78000 annually uh i i i don't think really that is uh, going to be sufficient okay um let me let me wrap it up with uh, kiran mazumdar show and uh, big question kiran the broad picture about whether enough has been done to revive the sentiment of investment you know we all know that everything cannot happen uh, in one budget uh, but um, we wanted to see a message that there is a plan to move us out of this economic slowdown did you hear that message i think uh, there is a recognition and i think there is already investment kicking in uh, because of the lower corporate tax rate and especially the 15% ta- corporate tax rate on manufacturing investments but i think there was another opportunity which i felt the budget missed and that was exports i think exports need to be incentivized you know 
especially uh, in the context of the slowing Chinese economy given the coronavirus scare, I think India needs to really accelerate its export potential. And it cannot do that without further incentives because we are not that competitive in global markets. So I think that could have been one opportunity for the uh, government and for the finance minister to consider. And it's still not too late. I just hope that we can still look at the export sector as one that will revive investments. So that to me is, a, is something that was missed in the budget. Absolutely. And, you know, we all know that uh, everything doesn't need to be done in the budget. Uh, uh, seeing what happened last year, we can expect a lot more outside the budget as well. So let's hope for the best. Thank you so much uh, to all of you for joining us uh, on this very interesting chat. The big budget face-off after the break with Jayan Sinha and Manish Tiwari, both astute politicians, both former ministers, will slug it out. Don't miss it. Coming right up. Now in this IDD uh, budget special, we're going to get you the eco-political viewpoint. I have with me um, two excellent speakers, Jan Sinha of the BJP and Manish Tiwari of the Congress Party. Both have had, uh, you know, uh, various roles of being in government, uh, elected representatives, and uh, are in a good position to talk about what has actually happened in this budget and what hasn't. Mr. Jan Sinha, let me begin with you. Uh, for once, uh, some corporates have also been pretty candid this time round. And the word on the street is, hai, some things were announced, but we were expecting a lot more considering the situation in the economy. Why do you think the finance minister seems to have held back? Uh, two things that you need to consider, Tamanda. Number one, there have already been many, many important announcements prior to the budget itself, whether it was the corporate tax cut, whether it was the 10,000 crore stressed assets fund, whether it was the consolidation of banks. There have been very major announcements to address uh, the economic situation even prior to the budget. And then secondly, if you look at the budget, this was a long budget because this was a budget intended to resolve and deal with a number of concerns and issues that have been brought up through the various consultations. And step by step, measure by measure, the Honorable Finance Minister addressed most of the concerns that people had raised. And she also brought forward four or five, I think, very innovative proposals, including the simplification of the tax code, the elimination of the dividend distribution tax, the LIC strategic disinvestment, the taxpayer charter, uh, the increase in the support provided to the agricultural sector. If you look at these announcements, these are quite groundbreaking announcements. And again, as I said, if you come add to that the announcements that have already been made in the last six to eight months, then as far as economic policy making is concerned, the government has been operating at warp speed, I would say. Speed. Manish Tiwari, do you agree that the government has done the best possible in the given circumstances? One thing to say for sure, at least an attempt at transparency to list out off-balance sheet borrowings. Well, Tamanna, when the finance minister presented her first budget on the uh, 5th of July 2019, uh, the economy was absolutely primed for a bruising. And I think after the second budget that she's presented, the economy is well on its way. It's cruising for an even severer bruising. And the reason why I say that is because uh, the NDA BJP government has dug the economy into a hole. Uh, I wouldn't uh, be completely accans to say that the economy has coronavirus and you are administering medicine for a common cold. So therefore, if you look at the various proposals which Mr. Jain Sinha have really alluded to, they have done nothing to absolutely bring cheer to either the economy or the markets. In fact, the markets have been tumbling like nine pins throughout the day. And uh, if you sort of deal with the proposals one by one, the big ticket uh, announcements which uh, Mr. Sinha outlined for example, simplification of the tax code, you've actually ended up making the tax code uh, more complicated insofar as uh, dividend distribution tax is concerned. If you consider it a big ticket reform, all you've done is shifted the incidence of taxation from the company 
onto the uh, onto the individual. And uh, if you look at uh, social sector outlays, you know the the outlay on Manriga, which is the single biggest instrument of putting money into the hands of people, especially the poor and the most vulnerable, hasn't even gone over the inflation threshold in terms of the outlays. Uh, for the next year as juxtaposed against uh, the previous year. So therefore, I think the finance minister or the NDA BJP government does not really have a measure of how, uh, of, of how uh, serious the economic crisis is. And therefore, when you live in your own bubble, a zone of delusion, you are unable to craft the uh, instruments uh, essential for resuscitating and rescuing okay, the Indian economy. I'm going to let Mr. Sinha respond to that. But Mr. Sinha, I have uh, another question for you. On the personal income tax cuts, on the personal income tax cuts, they were widely expected. Many have said there's no point. That's not what the economy needs. But there is a new system and a new version. Two things. It doesn't seem to be all that it's cracked up to because if you take away the deductions, most people would rather stick with the old system rather than the new one. And also, what I've been hearing from a lot of personal finance experts is it disincentivizes savings. A lot of you know new employees come into the workforce and they start taking those insurance policies and those SIPs and everything to save tax. So disincentivizing savings. Is that really a good idea right now when your household saving rate is anyway plummeting? No, I don't think you can draw a straight line between what you were saying, Tamanna, and savings. Uh, I think if you give money back to taxpayers, which is what the simplification of the direct tax code does, and of course, uh, responding to what Manishji was saying earlier, our government does not live in a bubble. We've had very wide-ranging consultations with all stakeholders, as the Honorable President also said in his presidential address yesterday. So we've had very extensive consultations. And one of the inputs that came back from people was, please simplify the tax code. There are 100 exemptions and deductions that are there in the direct tax code right now. Give us a very simple alternative, which is what has been provided. A simple alternative where you, know, you get rid of the exemptions exemptions and you get a lower rate. Now once you get the lower rate and the Honorable Finance Minister has correctly uh, pointed out that this will result in 40,000 crores in savings for taxpayers. So once people decide what is the lower tax for them, whether it is to do it with exemptions or deductions or whether to do it without any of that and to take the lower tax rate, net net the government is still going to put 40,000 crores in the hands of taxpayers. Now that was a big demand from industry for a consumption boost, particularly for urban middle class consumers that will go out and buy houses and cars and really boost the economy. The consumption multiplier is very important in the economy. And so that's what we've done by providing 40,000 crores, giving it to taxpayers through the simplification. We've really, really made a big, big difference uh, in their lives. And coming to the dividend distribution tax, again, to respond to what Manishji was saying, he's saying you're just moving it from the corporation to the individual taxpayer. Yes, that is indeed the case, but that also results in significant efficiency uh, in uh, taxes as a result of that because taxpayers can then take advantage of certain exemptions and deductions that are available to them. And that also is a net last loss to government of 20,000 crores. So we are going to put 20,000 crores in the hands of companies uh, and this is a saving for them as well. Uh, and that will naturally promote investment. So if you actually go into the details of all of these proposals, you'll find that they are very well thought out. They're carefully crafted. And they will, in fact, make a very big difference. Coming now, finally, to your point, Tamanna, about savings. Because of what we are doing with respect to the corporate bond markets, the incentives we are providing, the equity markets and so on, the incentive to save will be high because the real rate of return that people will be getting from you know, the, the bond markets, from the equity markets, yeah. uh, and even, I dare say, from their uh, provident fund savings are going to be very significant. Okay, the insurance companies are shivering in their shoes today because they don't know who's going to buy their ULIPs if there's no tax cuts on them. But that's a different question. Manish Tiwari, uh, let me come to you on what you think a, a UPA government or a Congress government would have done differently. You've said that they're treating the flu or the cold when there's a coronavirus going on in the economy. What is the one or two things that you would have done with a majority like this one? Well, first of all, uh, we wouldn't have dug the economy into the ground, uh, the manner in which they have over the past five years. So that's the first thing we would have done. 
that not brought this country through such an impasse. But let me respond to a few things which Jainji said. You see, you cannot uh, draw a straight line between a tax break and consumption. So therefore, if government has foregone revenue of 40,000 crores, as Jainji is suggesting, uh, that essentially does not straight away translate into consumption because the environment which is there outside uh, in the economy is not conducive to any consumption at all. So therefore, while government may have foregone uh, foregone 40,000 crores of revenue, uh, essentially it just people may just end up saving it up uh, rather than investing it. Number two, on one hand, uh, JNG talked about simplification in the tax code, saying that we want to do away with all the exemptions and the various concessions which are there in the Income Tax Act. And on the other hand, in the same breath, he says, but when you shift the incidence of DTT onto the uh, consumer, the consumer can take benefit of the exemptions which are available uh, in the Income Tax Act. That sounds like a bit of an oxymoron. You know, if you are trying to simplify the Income Tax Act, then why would you want people to avail of exemptions which you are trying to, uh, in any All case, right. uh, do away with? Uh, through this process. So therefore, there is complete confusion and chaos uh, in let the manner ask, in let which me ask uh, the, big the entire budget Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know, Sena wants three, to respond. One, one, one minute, let me just ask the big question. Let me ask the big question, which is the elephant in the room. Let me ask the big question, which is the elephant in the room, which is the connection between uh, the economic situation and what is happening in the country right now. Both of you are astute politicians as well, so I must uh, touch upon this. Mr. Jayan Sinha, there is a view, there are, you know, a, a lot of people saying that with the political capital the BJP enjoys, is it squandering that political capital or uh, using it uh, or focusing it on things which are disturbing social harmony instead of focusing it on the economy? I would like you to respond to that. Also, you know, I have to refer to the fact that uh, the um, MOS finance, a position that you have once held, and Mr. Anurag Thakur's comments and the way that they have now become the big talking point of someone in that position instead of his take on the economy right now. Do you think that the focus needs to be rebalanced for the government? Take the economic slowdown more seriously and focus your energies and your political capital there. Let me first address the confusion in Manish ji's mind because he talked about being confused. I think yeah. the only person who's confused is Manish ji. You see, what we are saying is let's take the complexity out of the tax code. So if there were 100 exemptions and deductions, let's strip out the 70 that are not material, not that are trivial, that are not really contributing very much, and let's focus in on the 30 that... That, that I take, let's take the 30 that really matter. And it's these 30 that can then, if, if you look at dividends, be of assistance to taxpayers then in taking the appropriate exemptions and giving them the lower tax code. The whole idea of giving people a choice is to be able to decide whether they should take exemptions and deductions and bring down their taxes that way or whether to go with the simplification and bring down their taxes by having a lower tax rate. That's the choice that we're offering taxpayers and we are keeping those 30 exemptions and deductions that are the most powerful and the most impactful for individual taxpayers. And that's what I mean by simplification, you focus in on those things that really matter. Now, coming to your question, Tamanna, yes. about uh, you know, what is happening uh, with respect to the overall socio-political environment, right. there, of course, you, know, you have to consider that we have been making a series of changes using our political capital, as I said earlier, to push through the corporate tax cut, to push through the consolidation of banks, to bring in the stressed assets fund of 10,000 crores. Uh, and these are the kinds of big important steps that we've taken even prior to the budget. So as far as the government is concerned, no matter what is happening on the election front, we are doing what's necessary for the economy. And I can tell you that the government uh, is very effective, it's very capable, it's very competent. We can handle economic policy making on the one hand, and we can handle so now, you know, I'm whatever is required perception. to I'm talking about perception about so, the world. Uh, there's when, plenty of uh, no, no, capability uh, in the so, government. So let me, let me, let me uh, make my uh, question more specific. You've seen what George Soros has said.
Uh, you've, you've seen what Satya Nadella has said. Uh, you've seen the Eurasia Group report, uh, which uh, puts uh, the current uh, political system uh, situation in India as a risk factor. Is this what we want these people to talk about when they talk about India? Is What is the India story uh, signifying right now? And that is the concern. You know, uh, Tamanna, there's always a range of views about every country. Some people are more positive. Uh, and certainly, if you look at uh, the political views across the world, you'll find that those that are more right of center parties, those parties are, are very favorably inclined towards India, very favorably inclined to investing in India, and so on. Those parties that are more left of center have always uh, had, uh, you know, sort of a more uh, uh, adversarial uh, position with respect to the Bharatiya Janata Party because ideologically we are at two different uh, sides uh, of the spectrum. Uh, and so those views will also be expressed. So, of course, uh, you know, in a democratic setup, which you have uh, in many important countries around the world, like in the US, in the UK, and elsewhere, you will have a range of views with respect to India, just like we have a range of views that we have in India. And that's how a noisy democracy works around the world. And it's good because a diversity of points of view results in more robust decision making. So we welcome all points of view. Whatever issues people have, I think we are addressing those uh, in a very comprehensive manner. Uh, Manish Tiwari, I just want to respond to that point, uh, that there is a range of views out there. And then there seems to be a ten tendency to pick up and highlight the ones that uh, you know, throw the current government in a poor light. Well, uh, Tamanna, I think uh, the current government does not understand one fundamental postulate that social harmony, disharmony and economic progress cannot go hand in hand. When you have, so, uh, when you have a lack of social cohesion, economic progress is going to be a natural casualty and that is exactly what is happening Money is a coward and money goes to the safest harbor. And today money does not consider India because of the social strife which the NDA BJP government has unleashed as a safe harbor. These are the very same people, these are the very same publications, the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Economist, the Financial Times, and all these uh, ultra-rich investors who were singing pians of this government in 2014. If you were to see the cover of uh, The Economist, I think it was 2014 or 15, that when is the Indian tiger going to catch up with the Chinese dragon? And all these individuals, all these international publications, which international investors read, are today completely and absolutely negative with regard to India. And if the government chooses to disregard that, and if they think that continuing with this kind of social strife which they have unleashed across the length and breadth of the country, they are going to get economic development, then I'm afraid, as I said earlier, okay. they are living in a delusion, they are living in a bubble, it's not going to happen, the economic strife is going to become much, much worse, right. and next me, year, when the budget would be presented, you would be measuring India not on the GDP index, but on the global misery index. No, I hope not. I hope not. Listen, if you know, the economy is one factor. If it does badly, everyone suffers. No politician, no person gains. We all yeah, suffer. Yeah, but you need to handle okay, the thing. economy properly. Jansana, you have to respond you to You need that. to handle you the economy to properly. To you want to respond to that. That's why no one can score brownie points in the economy, because then everyone suffers. Yes, yes, Jansana. Yeah, of course, Tamanna, of course. Uh, we, uh, I, I, I read the, I, I read the very same publications that Manish ji has just quoted. He reads them, I read them, and because I read them, I also know that both in 2014 and 2019, most of those publications endorsed uh, the Congress Party uh, for uh, for office uh, in India, and look where it got them. Uh, they endorsed uh, Rahul Gandhi ji uh, for uh, being prime minister and you know they had their calls very very wrong and as a result of that of course they're beloved of the Congress but certainly not at all uh, aligned or consistent with what the Indian political situation is. So we, let's take all of that with a very big grain of salt because they frankly don't know the political reality, they don't understand the big political forces at work in India right now and the reality is despite not getting their endorsement in 2014 and 19. We won very handsome majorities and we delivered uh, the 
goods for the people of India. We delivered for the people of India, which is why we won with an even better majority in 2019. Okay. So the That's... fact of the matter is we have strengthened the economy. Yeah. We've moved away from the crony, crony economy, the socialist economy of the UPA to an entrepreneurial wealth creating economy right. that the BJP has created, the NDA has created in the oh. last few years. All right, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I want to thank Jen. May Sina. I just... May I just come in for a second? Okay. May I? May I? Very short. No, no. May I just seconds. come in for a second, Tamanna? May okay. I just come in for a second? They, 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 they the alleged Manish crony economy the delivered 8.2 percent uh, growth word. year on year for 10 years, yeah. and your, 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 you know, your great entrepreneurial economy has it's pushed okay. into a, India into a hole where the act, where the actual GDP growth rate is probably saying, 2 percent. You know, so that's what your great that experiment the over the past five years has done to the Indian economy, Jayanti. Of the UPA economy were 4 percent or below, and that's what we inherited. Manish Tiwari and Jain Sinha there, I was going to commend them for, you know, this wonderful, very uh, silent political discussion, but, well, that didn't last. Remember, if there's an economic slowdown, no one benefits from it. No opposition party benefits from it. It's in everyone's interest that the economy is fixed at the earliest. And of course, it's our job to hold those in power to accountability. With that, I want to thank all of you for joining us on this very special edition uh, of the India Development Debate on Budget Day 2020. We'll, of course, be back tomorrow.